Thank you for joining me today. Love Them Knives Channel LTK here. Hinderer. MP1. Yeah. This is what the MP1 looks like. In black micarta. How black is that black? It's not very black, is it? <laughs> I mean, check this out. This is black. This is not all that black. This is kind of a worn looking black. Linen micarta, you know, that micarta stuff always, it, it changes over time. It ages, it gets different with your uh, finger oils on here. It changes. It does look different after a period of time. So it's one of those. I guess it's more organic in that, in that uh, way than just doing a straight G10, which you can get these in. It's got a sheep's foot blade. This is a titanium frame lock flipper. It's got Teflon or nylon uh, bushings, washers, whatever. Um, here's your lockup. 25% at best. It's not, it doesn't have a lock bar insert in here. I don't know. I kept thinking I heard somebody say that he carbonized the ends of his lock bar so they don't need to do that. I'm not sure. I, I could be wrong. You know, I wake up, it's a whole new world, I swear to God, every day. So don't pay attention to me. <laughs> In any case, you know, there's a guy that does the assembly. He puts his name on the card. So, hey, there's a lot of pride going on there. Rick Hinderer, I'm a smart guy. It's like, here's your starter knife. Now what do you want to do? Because, I mean, you could do a lot of things to these. Stonewash blade, pretty thick blade stock. It's like 4.2 uh, millimeter thick. See, it's point, well, let's get up in here. Yeah, 0.16 something. Maybe we'll get back up in here, leave me. Yeah, 1.645, somewhere in there. Um, 4.2 millimeter blade stock. And, and this fatness in here, is like uh, 13 and a half millimeters, so 0.53, yeah. So it's a handful here. It's tip up, tip down that you can do on the, on the pocket clip, but not left hand, okay? So it's right hand only. At least you get the cover plate and the screws, you know, so you can cover the area that's not being used for the pocket clip. This came in tip down form, which is, it's a thing. What can I say? It looks a little off center to me when I first got it out of the box. Um, it favors the lock bar side. So, I mean, does that look off center to you? It looks off center to me. It's not a lot off center. So, didn't know what to think about that, you know, and also if it favors the lock bar side, I mean, the lock bar obviously rides, you know, with the detent ball rides the actual blade stock there. So it's not a fixed position uh, like the top scale is. So would it tend to do that in any case? Uh, I don't know. I've had a lot of frame lock knives that they're perfectly centered. So it just seems a little bit off. I did check the pivot <clears throat> and it's, it rotates unless you use the thing and I'm not going to do this. It's not my knife. I got this uh, for a buddy who asked me to, well, I, you know, I was doing some knife swapping and stuff and I owed him some money and, <clears throat> and so to boot. And so he says, just order one of these and send that to me. Uh, Cause I got some other stuff for him. So putting it in the box and sending this to him. So I'm the first one to get my hands on it. He hasn't touched it yet. Put my screwdriver in here, um, but there's no blade play. So I'm going, I don't know that there's a lot to tighten, but it turned the whole pivot, which, you know, they ought to get to the point where they got the little flat spot, where they fix it to where the whole thing won't spin. Um, that, that's kind of a little troubling. Although you can use the tool, hold it there and break it loose. But obviously there's some... Loctite or something in here. So we'll leave that alone. Let him get to that. 
this modular platform thing is here where you can go put a tool in here, take this out, put it a different uh, type of end piece on there. You know, maybe a bottle opener end piece or whatever they're going to make for these things. I uh, don't know that that's terribly meaningful for me, except bottle opener never hurts, actually. Maybe more than a lanyard hole needs to be. Or how about a big old long spike for a skull crusher? I don't know. I, I didn't look at the accessories that they're making for these. But you know, Rick Hinder, he's a smart guy. It's like, oh, well, like here's a starter knife, 450 bucks. But, you know, you we can change the uh, color of the hardware. We can do this as well. Oh, how about a different color pocket clip? Oh, yeah, we can change all these little end pieces out. <laughs> you know, you get the fatty flipper. Like this one is like, oh yeah, the standoffs. Oh, we have them in blue and gold. And, you know, it's all of a sudden you start out at 475 for this, 450 for this, and then you end up with like $675. Not bad. Smart guy. And you know, the good thing about hinderer stuff, you can send it back in for spa treatment. You know, in case you really use your knife and you just beat the hell out of it, uh, you know, you can send it back in. They'll whip it all back in shape, send it back to you. So that's one of those things you get. It's kind of, that's one of the perks of having uh, a knife made in the United States where they can do that. You know, Benchmade's another one that comes to, to mind. You know, I sent this one to Benchmade. And they rebuilt this whole knife. I didn't ask them to. But I just wanted them to sharpen it and give me a different pocket clip because the black one that was painted was all scored up. And this is that the more powder coated. So um, it was interesting. So, you know, that's another place, but USA made, right? So uh, that is one of those advantages. Check the knives out, though. They're about the same size. Um, this is... Three and a quarter inch blade, like seven and seven eighths overall. So they're really close. I think this is eight overall, but uh, really close, really close in size. But the blade stock here is pretty thick. So S35VN, you know, I and I think all the MP ones that I've seen are S35VN. Uh, not that he's never used other blade steels. He has on other special run stuff, but uh, haven't seen that on any of these yet. And, you know, this is not my car to handle. Let me set this down for a minute. Um, <clears throat> got this one. See, I, I mean, he sent me the link, my buddy. So, I, like, DLT Trading, been buying this one with the black uh, micarta. So I got it. And, you know, even though, I mean, it still looks a little dusty, doesn't it? See? Um, well, hell. Did I? Yeah. So when I first got his knife, I took a picture of it, printed it off, although it's kind of glassy. But see, I mean, it is. It's kind of like faded denim, isn't it? Kind of strange. Um, but. Oh. Also, you know. Modular platform one or MP1 for short. So that's the whole deal about the de uh, the name of the knife. Three and a quarter inch, you know, and here's your stats on it. Three and a quarter inch blade, seven, three quarter overall, which doesn't count this, this lanyard thing that hangs off the end. Um, you know, plain edge, fairly thick blade stock, S35 EN 5.6 and reversible tip up, tip down, carry on the pocket clip and frame lock. Now, you can get them in different colors. I mean, this obviously this is price high to low, so here's the most expensive one that they had on this page, which was the full titanium one, which I really like actually. Although, you know, you can beat the hell, you can get snail trails and all kinds of problems with titanium. So, you know, my next backup would be the blue. I like the G10. Uh, they have a lot of micarta stuff in here. And you could get, you know, and what he'll do is blue anodize the backspace. So like this one is the toxic green G10 with black. But on the flip side, it's uh, bronze anno. So that's kind of cool. This is blue anno on the back of this. So you get a lot of different options 
interesting in that regard. The detent's really strong on this. I tried to shake this out and gravity flip it, but I had no uh, luck with it. And that was earlier before, I, you know, when I had room to kind of sling my arm, but no, uh, that wasn't working. So that's pretty strong. Probably a seven on my detent scale, maybe a little over a seven. Um, yeah, because you got thick blade stock, you'd think you'd be able to flip that out of there. But that that that's pretty stiff right there. When it goes, it goes. So even though you've got these Teflon washers or whatever instead of bearings, the action's really good. I mean, it goes, it goes. And the flipper tab is pretty tall. No jimping, but it's it's pretty comfortable. Um, yeah. And I think it's very kind of poised intentional. I mean, I usually like my flipper tabs laying back a little bit because my finger, when I reach there, the natural incline is that. So I like it like lazy boy lazy. But this one is more like pay attention and get your act together type thing. So, but it works. It works. There's no jimping there. There is jimping up here. You know, and it's fairly smooth because this whole thing's stonewashed. So, you know, big, heavy, a lot of reinforcement on the tip of the sheep's foot blade. High hollow grind, good for slicing, not so much for a piercer. Good, you know, work knife for law enforcement, first responders, or just anybody that really uh, uses a knife. Uh, depending on what you're using it for, you know, blade shape makes a lot of difference in what you're trying to accomplish, uh, depending on what your task is. But yeah, I like the backside. You know, a lot of interesting stylistic stuff going on here, lines, movement going on in the patterns, which kind of keeps it from looking like just this plain old slab of nothing. Kind of like this. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> But uh, you know what I'm saying? You know, it kind of, it breaks things up. Oh, well, this one's a little bit bigger. This is that fatty flipper with a harpoon. But see, it's a little, just a little bit bigger. Not a whole lot. So these are pretty much just that kind of eight inch overall easy EDC type of thing. And this one's comfortable in the hand really comfortable in the hand. The ergos are really good on this knife. If you're going to say something about this knife that I think everybody can agree on, the ergos are really, really good on this knife. Really comfortable in the hand. Uh, reverse grip as well. Uh, the modular situation here, to me, uh, not so important. Um, this knife for $450 would not be a you know, a field beat knife for me. I, I just, it's just too much money for me to put to that kind of task. But, you know, if you're professional and you're doing things, I mean, you want the best equipment. So, I mean, I, I, could, I could make the argument there that yes, this would be, this, this would be the knife and you can always get it refreshed. So you can put it through a lot of, a lot of tough stuff and it will, it'll stand up. You know, it's kind of a, a cool looking backspacer here. And it also helps protect the blade a bit uh, from things that might come through the back to interfere or damage the edge. So, you know, that's nice as well. Of course, you got dual thumb studs. And of course, I use the flipper tab instead. That's pretty stiff detent, so come on. Oh man, that's tough. That is tough. I ain't using the flipper tabs, I'll tell you that. I, maybe I'm coming at it from the wrong angle, but no. This is so much better. So I guess if they really wanted to make this a flicker instead of a flipper, lighten up the detent and do a little cutaway, which they've done to get to that that uh, thumb stud, but it's not working for me. Now, maybe I'm putting too much, you know, on the... Oh, still, man, that's tough. That's tough. 
I'm going to leave it alone. Any case, yeah, it's it's good. It's reasonably sharp out of the box. So no problem there. And of course, S35VN been around for a little while now. It's very, uh, very good steel. Very good user steel. And, you know, it's... It's heavy for its size, but you got thick old blade stock and you got a titanium frame. So yeah, it's going to weigh something. And it weighs 152 grams. 5.4 ounces. You know, so, uh, well, okay. Fatty flipper. <laughs> Let's have a way off. Ooh, fatty is fatter. It's a little bit longer. And it's a big old chunk of change too. Pinch made grip, 4.1, what? So that, you know, and this, uh, well, let me see. Hollywood, Spyderco PM2, that's going to be pretty light too. Probably under 4, 3.8. So yeah, you know, this thing, about 2 ounces more than this thing. So yeah, it's a chunk of change. This is not a light carry, even though it's an EDC size knife. You know, three and a quarter inch blade, under eight inches overall. So, but the weight, mm, that puts it in a little bit different light. In any case, I'm going to send this on to my buddy. Have him look it over. He really got the Jones for the black micarta. Which changes, you know, as you hold it and it encounters your skin oils and stuff like that. So, I mean, I guess it's a more, mm, you know, organic thing for him than to do it uh, with the G10 or the anode backside or whatever. He chose it, so it's his bag of tricks. Probably not the iteration I would have chosen but i tell you what i like the design of this knife you know i really do so i think this could be really a hard charger uh tough work knife uh interesting design you know you see this landing ramp here for your flipper tab so it's comfortable there they didn't like do a bunch of jimping out here to rough up your finger you know, lands in a smooth area. It makes sense. And, you know, you can always change things up because he makes optional hardware and other things like that. This hardware looks pretty nicely done. Nicely machined. Solid knife. I mean, if you can say anything other than the ergos are incredible, these knives are solid. I'll leave you to it. I think it's interesting. I mean this and Mr. Fatty. Cool knives. I guess maybe I I would really be torn. The harpoon, but maybe, you know, maybe a drop point on this one. And then I might go down this road because I like these big old fat standoffs. But um, the MP1, stylistically, in a way... I really like um, I think I do prefer but there's just things about the fatty flipper that I also really like so it'd be it'd be a tough choice good knives though interesting thank you for joining me join me on Instagram I the links down in the description area so click on that check out my site and Wander around Instagram. There's really some cool stuff going on. A lot of guys out doing a lot of different knife pimping and all kinds of different makers out there. It's a whole new world. It really is. Every day it's a whole new world. And you know what we do on this channel. We love them knives. So stay sharp.